So by this point, you already know all about tropisms, auxins, and gibberellians, and are now ready to have a think about how our knowledge of plant hormones can actually be put to use. You may want to watch these two videos first. So how do you think growth hormones, or auxins, can be used as selective weed killers? Pause the video and have a think. If you thought of the following, then give yourself a pat on the back, because it's definitely not obvious. The selective weed killers contain growth hormones, which cause the weeds to grow really quickly. This means the weed is absorbing nutrients from the soil at a much higher rate, and so the weeds absorb the weed killer in much larger quantities than beneficial plants. This can be used for getting rid of weeds without killing the grass, or thistle in a field without killing the crop. But they aren't just good at killing plants. Gardeners use growth hormones to promote growth. They take cuttings of plants and dip the stalk into a rooting powder, which contains growth hormones. This makes stem cuttings quickly develop roots and establish as functioning plants. But the use of plant hormones doesn't stop there. They can also be used in controlling fruit ripening. Some slow it down and others speed it up. We can use this knowledge to inhibit hormones during transport so that the fruit does not ripen too quickly. Or we can promote ripening when it is in the shops so that it is in the perfect condition for consumers. Bite into a banana and you don't expect seeds, do you? Hormones sprayed onto flowers can stop seeds developing, leaving us with big, juicy, seedless fruits. In nature, plants only germinate when conditions are ideal for growth. This is called seed dormancy, and is controlled by hormones. How do you think we can make use of dormancy? Pause the video and have a think. We can use hormones and inhibitors to remove the dormancy of seeds, thus enabling us to germinate seeds at all times of the year. We can also use these hormones to make plants grow bushier and make them flower at controlled times. Exactly what you want if you are entering a flower show. Crunchy red apples, juicy ripe mangoes, sweet bananas. You can thank ethylene for ripe fruit. Ethylene breaks down components of the cell walls to make them softer and makes them sweeter by converting starches to sugars. Ever wonder why you are told to put unripe fruit next to ripe fruit? It isn't as if ripe fruit can chat up the unripe fruit and tell them to ripen up. So what is happening? Ethylene is different to other hormones because it is an airborne gas and works on a positive feedback loop. Start with a little ethylene and this causes more ethylene to be released, which in turn causes even more ethylene to be released, and so on. Therefore promoting ripening in all local fruit. So from this video you should know now that plant hormones have many uses from weed killers to promoting growth in rooting powders, from controlling fruit ripeness to ensuring seedlessness and controlling dormancy.